Good morning, guys. This is the cul-de-sac this morning at the end of December, but I thought I'd take you back to the summer for a lovely, warm visit. Morning. Good morning guys, welcome back to the cul-de-sac and my friend's back over. You may remember he came previously on his Bruff Superior. Well, he's over again on this iconic American motorcycle. He asked if he could stay off camera for the video again and I completely want to respect that. I'm just grateful that he came over on his bike. This is a 1936 Harley-Davidson VLH model. The V-Series was Harley's seven-year run of the big twin side valve models, otherwise known as the flatheads, and they were made from 1930 through 1936. Primarily, they were a 74 cubic inches engine, or about 1200 cc in displacement. The V was the model series. The L signifies that it was a sport solo bike and the H denoted that it was high compression. The VL series was a total loss oil system model that came after the JD model. It was also superseded by the EL overhead valve knucklehead series in about 1936 and then the UL flathead series in 1937. So while this bike isn't original paint, it's a pretty accurate survivor retaining many of its one year only parts. 1936 was the first full production year of an 80 cubic inches or 1281 cc bike. Prior to 36, Harley had experimented with 80 cubic inch bikes in around 1934 and made a small batch of about 180 bikes in 1935. When the current owner purchased this bike in 2018, it covered about 15 miles between the previous three owners over a 30 year time frame. And it took the current owner about a month to get the bike running and once it was running he put up 145 miles on it the first weekend and he's done about 2,000 miles since then as well. He often rides this as his regular rider. And a fun fact about this bike, previous owners included the late John Parham. He was the founder of JNP Cycles and also the National Motorcycle Museum. So while the VLH motor was essentially a VL engine, the stroke was increased by about a quarter of an inch to provide for the additional displacement, along with hotter cams, higher compression, about five to one, and a slightly bigger linkert carburetor. The bore and the stroke, three and seven sixteenths of an inch by four and a quarter inches. The motor is a side valve, flat head, dry sump, and air-cooled engine. Fuel's provided through a single linkert. It's an M41L carburetor, which is standard on the VLH models, whereas the VL came with a smaller Venturi linkert M41 carburetor. Here we've got the clutch pedal. It's actuated by your left foot. Heel to engage, hence heel to slow and toe to go. Most Harleys didn't come with a speedo before 1936 because it was an optional item, but the VLH model was the first model to include a Corbin speedo as a standard feature. And it comes with the optional trip meter and telltale indicator, which holds the indication of your highest speed. Performance for the year was excellent. It was actually a hot rod of a bike and a very torquey motor with a top speed of 90 miles an hour. 
The ignition is a battery ignition with a manual advance points and the engine output is about 35 brake horsepower at 4000 revs per minute. The gearbox or transmission is a three speed with reverse as well for uh, sidecar applications and left hand gear shift. The oil reservoir holds about a gallon of oil and this bike the owner has it running on Valvoline VR1 50 weight because of the higher zinc content. Nineteen thirty six was also the first year that Harley used this iconic winged bullet tank logo. Then for gas or petrol tanks, Harley tanks of this period were split into two separate tanks. On the right hand side you've got the primary gas tank and on the left hand side you've got a one gallon oil reserve in the front and then a one gallon reserve for gas at the rear. The oil tank has also got a small hand pump that helps the rider supply additional oil to the motor. Oh, that's wonderful. Love it. As we look at the bike from the rider's point of view, sitting on the bike, we've got the ignition switch, the front and rear light switch. We've then got the horn switch. Here we've got the manual advance and then the throttle. And then this is the dimmer switch. And then the front brake lever is actually on the left hand side. This was before America standardized all front brakes to be on the right hand side. Beginning in 1935, Harley introduced a fishtail design that would be used for several decades. And this particular bike is unique in that it still retains its very rare Burgess battery muffler. All VL models were fitted with a traditional side stand and rear stand and the D-shaped tubing of the rear stand was only used in 1936. Thanks very much for watching guys, this has been another tale from the cul-de-sac. Please remember to subscribe and click the little bell and you'll get a notice whenever I release a new video, usually every Sunday morning and sometimes during the week.